Welcome everyone to this walking tour of London. So I did the taxi tour of London in Watch Dogs Legion where we took in the whole city and most of the sites. In this video I'm going to do some walking tours of a few locations that aren't really accessible when you're in a vehicle. So we're going to do the Barbican Estate, we're going to do the redeveloped Battersea Power Station, we're going to do the London Eye area and I think it's Jubilee Gardens around there, as well as uh, the South Bank uh, where the Tate Modern is, then we'll cross the bridge over to St Paul's and check out the area around there. So these are all areas that you can't really explore when you're in a car. So we've pulled up in the Beach Street Tunnel, which is uh, just underneath the Barbican Estate. So the Barbican Estate sits atop the tunnel. It's completely separated from the traffic below. In real life, there are two main entrances to the Barbican Estate. One is from Barbican Tube Station, so you'll cross a bridge over the road uh, to the estate. And the other one is the other side of the tunnel, which I believe is actually modelled in this game. These stairs here don't exist in real life, but as soon as you reach this plaza here, this is all completely true to life. So the Barbican is formed of three main residential towers, as well as um, a load of other residential buildings and what we can see ahead of us which is the entrance to the art center so it's like a, a theater an art gallery that kind of thing so there's sort of two layers of plaza here so there's this one which is uh, sort of a lower area which is closer to the art center and then the upper plaza here so if you were coming in from barbican tube station you would end up on this uh, this upper plaza so this wall we're heading to in real life there's a bridge here that takes you across to the tube station uh, but in Watch Dogs it obviously just ends there but again this area here completely uh, true to life the shape of the buildings the position of the fountains pretty much everything is very accurate indeed so the Barbican estate was built around sort of a post-war period I think in the sixes as um, sort of housing for people who lived and worked in, in the city so these were rented out by the city of London themselves so regular people could live close to where they worked. Um, then in the 80s, everybody was given the right to buy their home at a discounted price. So uh, most of the Barbican residents bought their their properties. Um, and now these, these properties here are worth millions and millions of pounds. So fair play to the guys who bought them cheap uh, in the 1980s. Doesn't really help people who want to live and work in London right now. Although these flats do come up for rent fairly often um, they sit to the higher end of sort of the UK market but as central London goes they're not they're not the highest in the area so it is still possible to live at the Barbican estate if you're not a millionaire so the architecture here is well known for its brutalist style so the concrete here and all those textures you see are very true to life indeed uh, it's it's an iconic estate and it's something that is not really super well known still. So this here is uh, the sculpture court and the building I believe is called Frobisher Crescent. So this building here on the left is residential now, but originally when the Barbican uh, Centre, the art centre was built, this actually contains uh, conference rooms and cinemas as well. So at the end of this crescent, we're going to see something which is slightly crazy, but again, completely true to life. So there is a massive tropical conservatory on the Barbican estate, and it is located at the end of this crescent. So we'll just take a moment to appreciate this. Um, it's not open to the public most of the time in real life. It's only open on, I think it's Sundays. Um, I believe the rest of the time it's for events and uh, I think residents can access it as well. If you are ever in London and you want to visit somewhere which is sort of slightly off a tourist map but still an absolutely amazing place, I would definitely recommend you come to the Barbican. Also because it's generally very, very quiet indeed. From the conservatory, we're going to enter the main walkway across the estate. So in real life, the conservatory has shifted a little bit to the left and that door we came out of is the entrance to the art centre. Um, but by and large, it's fairly accurate. So this walkway does actually exist and is a gateway to the rest of the city. 
As we look down here, this is the Barbican Center Terrace. So again, this, this exists, uh, it's completely true to life. Obviously in Watch Dogs Legion, they've shoved a load of high-tech crap in it, but whatever. And over this side, again, the estate is true to life. On the left, I believe, is the um, School for Music and Drama. And this structure here, these buildings, that fountain, that all exists. Uh, I believe it's accessible to residents only, sort of that side of the bridge. So we're going to try and take a closer look at the uh, at the terrace. So this church here, this is an original, um, I think it's medieval church or something, but was left over after the Blitz. Again, exists in real life and is in that position in the estate. The building on the left here, just behind us, is um, City of London School for Girls as well. So we're going to sneak into the lakeside terrace so I can show you guys a closer view. So it's really weird in Watch Dogs to see this as kind of a military base because in real life it's such a chill, peaceful place. Um, and just behind the terrace, so this structure we can see coming into view now, this is the Barbican Arts Centre itself, which is massive. Um, it's called London's Living Room and there's a huge foyer, there's coffee shops um, as well as obviously the theatre, the concert hall cinemas all that good stuff one of the sort of founding principles of the barbican is that it's always sort of set above or below the city it's never at the same level so it was all about grade separation or sort of separation of people from the traffic and that makes it a really chill place to be so there's our barbican tour and it's off to our next destination we're going to check out the redeveloped battersea power station Auto and circus disabled. west village development so the Battersea area or the Nine Elms area in Watch Dogs is very, very accurate. Oh, <laughs> mate, come on. Really? I'm, I'm trying to do a tour here. Uh, seriously. Seriously, dude. All right, let's, we'll just get this guy out of the way before we, uh, before we continue our tour. Oh, oh God, get out of here. All right. As I was saying, so Battersea Power Station and the area around it is currently being redeveloped um, and the watchdog's representation is a very accurate representation of how it will be when it is finally complete so a lot of this in real life right now is construction site but we're going to explain also uh, which bits currently exist and which bits are sort of still under still under construction so the power station itself which we'll take a look at in a minute is shown as sort of a big old shopping center in this game which is going to be but it's not finished yet this area here circus west village is actually complete right now and it does basically look like this i'm not sure if those bridges across um to the power station are going to be a feature in real life at the moment that's all hidden or the last time i was there is all hidden behind hoardings but circus west village itself uh, this area here is a very accurate representation and it's a really really nice place to be actually there's some nice looking flats it's by the water there's little supermarkets and restaurants and all that good stuff i think there's some minor variation here in that building on the left i'm not quite sure that sort of raised terrace exists but it is pretty damn close to real life so we'll take a look here at the power station so when they redevelop Battersea. You can see there's some flats being put on the top of the power station there. Again, that is true to life. That is part of the plan. Um, they're going to keep the main shape of the power station, the chimneys. They've hollowed out the middle. It was pretty hollow anyway, but <laughs> they, they're going to turn that into a shopping centre. And right at the top, uh, there's some there's some nice flats up there as well. Some very expensive flats also. So we'll come around here, just around sort of the front of Circus West Village and we'll check out the view from the water currently this area is a little bit of a pain to get to um, because the nearest tube station is a bit of a walk away but they are extending the northern line to this development i believe in future i'm not sure if the nine elms walkway in this game but shown under construction i'm not sure if that's actually going to exist in real life but if it does that will make it um, much much easier to get across to this part of town because this is sort of a redeveloped old area in terms of transport links it's still quite cut off because it was just mainly uh, industrial traffic that used to come down here so with our views taken in here we're going to take a wander into the shopping center itself and we'll take a look at what this will look like in real life um, when it's done 
I'm not sure what kind of shops are going to be in this sensor here when it's finished, but I'd imagine it will be quite nice designer stuff. Probably get an Apple store, that kind of thing. I don't think there'll be a Poundland or a, um, was it CEX Entertainment Exchange place. So as we come into here, you can see uh, it's, it's just a really stunning structure inside. I think that glass roof there is part of the real life master plan which is, is going to be absolutely awesome and it's definitely going to be a place to visit uh, when it's finished. So as we look up here we can see at the top left these are the flats that have been placed at the top of a power station building that look out, I think they're going to look out both sides basically into the shopping centre and out, um, out across the view from the power station as well. So we'll just take a wander up to the top floor taking a little bit more of this structure here there is one interesting feature on the ground floor, which I will show you uh, in a little bit, but we appear to be attracting some kind of attention. Um, I'm just going to act casual for a little bit, you know, taking some views, pretend nothing's going on, and I'm not one of London's most wanted. But this, this guy doesn't look happy. All right, anyway, so we're going to cut here for a bit, and I will see you as if by magic when everything is okay and we've been left well alone. <laughs> so let's continue our tour here of the, uh, the Battersea Shopping Centre. So the redevelopment of Battersea finally happening is a really big deal for the city as a whole because there have been so many proposals um, and so many sort of failed schemes that people thought that Battersea Power Station was just gonna sit abandoned uh, sort of for the rest of time. It's been basically abandoned for decades um, now because every redevelopment idea has uh, has failed. They've run out of money or it didn't get um, permission or whatever. So it's really nice to see a scheme finally going ahead. So this glass floor here down to, I think it's sort of some docks. Um, I have no idea if that will be a feature in real life. Same as the, the sort of turbines in the middle here. But if it is, that would be uh, absolutely awesome. And dead body and a guy who looks suspiciously like my character hey dude dude no all right fine whatever okay <laughs> the wonders of open world games eh? so that's the uh that's sort of the main centerpiece of the battersea redevelopment here we're gonna leave now and we'll take sort of one last look at the power station and the area uh, before we head off to our next destination here Again, just like with Barbican, this is not a highly touristy area right now. It's fairly quiet, but there's still some great stuff here in terms of, uh, well, just in terms of the area, the view, how chill it is. Uh, and there's, there's some really nice restaurants as well that are, that are open normally around this area. I don't know if when you finish the game, um, they sort of remove all this decorative high-tech crap from the landmarks. But, I mean, that would be pretty cool if they do. If someone could let me know, it might motivate me to keep my Ubisoft subscription and actually finish this thing. So I guess this is actually a good time for a quick review of Watch Dogs Legion. So the city itself, I have had such a good time just exploring because even though I technically do work in London, I haven't physically been there for about a year now. So it's absolutely uh, fantastic to be able to wander around the city, which by and large is very accurate and sort of taking the places I'm familiar with and you know see all those sites again especially these um, sort of lesser known places like Barbican and, and Battersea but the core game itself the story game it's like the environment the world uh, um, and sort of the game itself were made by two completely different teams which they probably were so the, the world itself is fantastic like I say very accurate amazing fun to explore but the gameplay is the most formulaic, boring crap you will ever play. It plays not only like every other open world third person action game, it almost feels like a step backwards to the old days of um, the PS2 third person games. Essentially they have provided you with an amazing open world which is never actually used. Every level is set in a generic construction site or you're doing stupid spider bot platforming through vents or you're finding keys to unlock doors in, in sort of rubble um, and generic looking offices. The, the game itself doesn't take advantage of any of this amazing scenery whatsoever as far as I can tell. So 
will just appreciate this part of Fantasy as well, uh, this part of Nine Elms, which is the US Embassy just behind us. And um, they actually built some new flats around the place as well called Embassy Gardens, which is a huge development. And we're going to see that here, or we're going to pass by it um, as we sort of drive on to our next destination. So the entire area has undergone a huge, there's Embassy Gardens just behind us, it's undergone a huge redevelopment and it's definitely one of those up and coming places in London right now. And onwards to our next destination which is going to be um, the Gardens by the London Eye. I'm just going to quickly look that up to make sure I get the name right. Auto drive, yes it's safe. Jubilee Gardens which is sort of a tiny tiny park um, by the London Eye so we'll just park up here and take a wander around this area and we'll also take a little uh, trip on the eye as well. So Jubilee Gardens again despite its location right on the south bank right near the London Eye tends to be one of those places that is largely ignored um, by tourists. Again it's even though it's a small area in the middle of a very busy place it is, um, it is actually quite peaceful despite the trains on this bridge here going past every two minutes uh, and that kind of stuff. Oh, where did you go off to? So the entire South Bank is a very a pretty area of, uh, of a city indeed, which is why it's, it's so popular and there's a lot of attractions here as well. Uh, the building behind us there is fictional by the way. In real life that is uh, the Shell Centre which used to be the offices of the Shell Oil Company, but I believe right now it's earmarked for redevelopment. So along here we have the, not just Jubilee Gardens, we've got the London Eye, we've got County Hall, which contains, I think it's SeaWorld, not SeaWorld, Sea Life Centre, and the Namco uh, Funscape Arcade is in the basement. If you come here, go to Jubilee Gardens, go to the arcade, don't bother with the Eye or the Sea Life Centre. So we're going to take a wander along here and take in the County Hall building. Again, this, this area here is basically completely accurate and true to life. If you come to London, you will instantly recognise it. Uh, but again, very difficult to access with a vehicle, which is why we're doing, uh, we're doing this walking tour. Because there are so many hidden details and sort of so much accurate scenery in this game that you'll just miss if you're, as far as I can tell, if you're mainlining the story and uh, if you're just driving around. I guess the purpose for this video or the audience for this video is people who are familiar with the area so I can kind of show hey look how accurate this actually is and um, you know how cool it is to just be able to walk around here. If you have stumbled upon this video and you're looking for I don't know Buckingham Palace, the Houses of Parliament and all of that stuff um, please check out the taxi tour video where we take in literally every single well-known site in the city in about half an hour, 45 minutes. So we're going to quickly ride the London Eye. You can ride it. Thank you uh, Ubisoft for making this possible. It would be such a shame if it was just sat there and you couldn't. But not only can you ride it, they've also included a little uh, sort of camera mode where you can see from the outside of a pod. So there is nothing more boring than watching your grandma's London Eye video where she's held a shaky camcorder out of a window and you have to watch the entire damn thing for like an hour. So we've just taken some shots here of sort of the, the prettiest bit of the trip um, and, and we'll just combine these and very quickly get through this montage here. So as for character comments it's much better from up here. It's nicer up here. And you can really appreciate the work that has gone into uh, not only the city and the open world, but also the engine, you know, making this all run smoothly and and look as good as it does. It looks basically photo real and I'm running at a good frame rate here while recording on a on a PC that's about, uh, about a year old now. I don't know how it looks or performs on console. I'd imagine PS5, you get like 60 FPS at 4K with all, this, uh, all these details and the ray tracing turned on. I'd imagine the PS4 version is uh, probably looks and runs a little bit worse from this here. So that's Jubilee Gardens, from London I, the County Hall area done. We're actually going to continue down the South Bank, but we're going to wait until night time because the next bit of the South Bank uh, you'll really want to see when it's all lit up and it's going to look amazing. And as if by magic, it is night time, so you can see the area is beautifully uh, lit up here. And this is fairly true to life. The South Bank is, uh, is generally quite nicely lit uh, at night, especially some of the buildings 
that we're going to see right now. So this area, if you just turn right from the eye and you continue under the bridge, uh, you end up here, basically. So we can look across the river and admire the city, or we can look at um, these buildings here. So at this part of the South Bank, there's a lot of sort of concrete, um, I don't know if they're brutalist, but sort of concrete structures here that look really, really nice when they're all lit up. Um, we're going to come across the National Theatre, which is the building after this one. I think this one is... It's called the South Bank Atrium in the game. I don't really know if there's anything special about it in real life. I'm not sure if it's part of the theatre or whatever. But as we just look up here, we can see the National Theatre, uh, which is very true to life and has all these nice lights on it um, and that kind of thing. But it's one of the sort of defining structures of the South Bank. Even if you're not really interested in the buildings themselves, uh, this place is definitely worth a walk. Um, at night because it, it just looks so nice there's also enough restaurants and cafes and bars down here to uh, to keep you occupied as well so these aren't the only structures on this part of the south bank um, there is also the oxo tower which is just ahead of us here and which we can see if we look up right now uh, which which also contains many restaurants and sort of artisan uh, stores and that kind of thing and if we head under this next bridge, we will find the Tate Modern Art Gallery, which is well known for uh, the massive turbine hall, where there's always some kind of incredible exhibit. I think the last time I was there, there was like a Roman style statue with a fountain in it or something. It's just it's just a nice thing to pop in and see. It's all free um, if, if you're in the area, basically. So looking across here, we can see St Paul's, the Millennium Bridge and the City of London itself. So to our right, this is the Tate Modern Gallery. Again, a very true to life area, minus the uh, minus all the holograms, of course. So we can't get into the gallery in the game, but what we will do is walk up to it and then cross the Millennium Bridge because the view across to St Paul's is really impressive. And from the bridge, um, you also get a really clear view of the city uh, tower bridge. And it's, it's just a really, really nice place to walk. In real life, just be careful when walking along there at night because it's full of people in hoodies trying to steal your wallet. But hey, what can you do? That's um, that's most of central London. So here we are. We'll take a walk across here, and we're actually going to walk all the way across to uh, St Paul's Cathedral. We'll take a quick look at that, and we'll take a look at the surrounding area, all of which is is basically completely true to life. Um, the lights on this bridge uh, and everything is very, very real indeed. So as we look to our right, we not only have uh, the City of London, which we covered in our taxi tour, but we also have Tower Bridge. And I'm not sure why the lighting clips in and out as you um, as you walk along, but whatever. And behind us there is the Shard and uh, the Tate Modern Gallery that we've just come from. And as we rotate round, um, just get a little closer look at the city, but we also see St Paul's um, coming towards us there in the distance. So as soon as we come off the bridge, it's a very, very short walk indeed. If we look the other side, we can see um, the South Bank that we have just uh, walked across. So the Oxo Tower, the London Eye, and obviously the Tate, um, which we just saw. So the area around the National Theatre, the Tate, um, sort of this bridge all the way across to St Paul's is a fairly high traffic area, um, sort of in terms of tourist traffic and that kind of thing, it's quite well known, which explains the, the pickpockets who are easily outwitted um, if, if you're used to walking around the town. So as we uh, come off the Millennium Bridge, we open up into this square here. Now on the right, I believe, are the offices of the Salvation Army or some kind of charity. As I recall the last time I was down here, really awesome location actually for um, for a charity headquarters and just a place to work really. So we'll cross this road, which is probably easier to cross in the game than it is in real life. Who needs a crossing? It's fine. And we come up to St Paul's Cathedral, which looks exactly like this in real life, all nicely lit up. Um, they've done uh, an amazing job of modelling this area in the game. 
it looks basically photo real again the only thing that lets it down i think it as always these days is for character modeling which is pretty good but it's still sort of very much in that uncanny valley kind of territory so we'll take a wander around the outside of St Paul's Cathedral, um, across the road here. Obviously all kinds of sandwich shops and stuff in real life, but we'll go around the edge and we will go to a place known as Paternoster Square, which is a fairly modern development um, right next to the cathedral. And again, is despite its location, is sort of slightly lesser known and there's some really, really nice, um, nice restaurants and that kind of thing in the area as well. If you're British and you watch the First Dates TV series, uh, this square here, Paternoster Square, is where the First Dates uh, restaurant is. So Paternoster Square, really nice development, lots of good food places, although I haven't been to any myself yet, probably should do when, um, when they all open up again. I can't tell you what this statue in the middle is, I'm sure somebody else will be able to. Um, but that is basically our walking tour of uh, sort of interesting areas in central London done. So we're going to head out of um, Paternoster Square and actually I will show you a bonus sort of clip. There's a couple of bonus clips coming up. One is a drone view of the inside of King's Cross train station which you can't walk into but there is a mission where you take a drone inside and in the other bonus clip we're going to try and steal the Barbican key just for fun. So this is the drone view here of King's Cross Station. Again, super, super accurate. I'm not sure if they only modelled it for this mission, having not got very far myself in the game, but they've done a really good job of it, um, considering it is just for a small part of the game, I'd imagine. And it's, it's nice to be able to see inside the train stations as well, because most of the other train stations just sort of have a generic tube entrance and you can't actually get inside it. And now it's time for our last bonus clip, so I've just parked up here in my Tesla and we're going to go and steal the Barbican key, there'll be no commentary for this bit, just enjoy the adventure, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon, take care.
Suspect reported in your area, potentially armed and hostile. Moving to the hostile's location. Auto drive now in Auto drive now to save you in the suspect. Auto drive now enabled. Cream and spice and all things nice. That's what little treats are made of. Sanjuli's kitchen. Voted best tikka masala Over. in London. Turn into HQ. Search terminated. 